Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to A House of Many Doors. Last episode, we nearly sacrificed a few people to some wonderful people in the licorice world of Athena. That was, uh... Well, it's a choice I probably should have made, perhaps. But, uh, no. Decided against it. Decided I like my crew and that they give me bonuses that I could actually use. So... Instead of actually sacrificing one of my crew members, I'm just going to grab a prisoner or perhaps in the future find ourselves some occult relics. Today, however, we're going to go south to the City of Masks because I got my Warding Iron and the Aranax Silk so we can help Agnes in Misery Guts. Then I'm going to make a quick stop at Fargo Keep. Just want to double check what the stats are that I need and then we're going to go on a westerly trip. Solve all our problems there, probably catch this Ichthyid Hound, maybe, and go from there. We shall see what the future holds, and I was, I should have really just looked at the map again. Basically directly south, good. Nice and simple. Ah, navigation, you have never been my strong suit. Oh, and we did buy another boxcar, so we are... Well, we have more room for things. I don't know if we're actually the same speed. We seem to be. Thank you. Seem to be about the same speed, so... You know. There's that. Kind of what expected a... Whisper promises on the wind. Oh, great. Oop. Nope. Let's not run into anything. Yeah, kind of would have expected uh, us to be a bit slower, but I'll take it. Hmm, this might not be worth it. Hmm. Well, that was just uh, something creepy on the roof of that dilapidated church. That's fine. Probably best that we don't see whatever it is. Something sinuous. Oh, God, these guys again. The sleeping people. Or the people who catch the sleeping people. The naughty doctors, that was the name. Anyone else hear that sound? Because it didn't... Didn't sound right. Someone chopping wood or something? Oh, might have been them crashing in to nothing up there. Uh, yeah, enter the cottage. Oh, cultist paraphernalia. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I can't... Nope. Guess who's going back? The wrong way. Oh, no. I shouldn't do this, but I... You know what? I'm going to attack on my fears. What is this? The Tyrannic. One of a kind, tall as a mountain. The most intimidating weapon in the governor's arsenal. Yeah. A dreadnought that itself inspires dread. Hundreds of crews scurry in its veins like ants. The Tyrannic was built after the Chimeric Campaign. It's no coincidence that the cities have not needed to fight a war since. Huh. Attack, don't do this. Why would you even try? Hmm. Well, I see no reason not to. Compare maps. They're happy to swap maps with you in exchange for the latest news from the greatest city in the house. Ah, found Kennedy Yard. You relay the latest news, and although the radio... <laughs> and through the radio, you hear them murmur in consternation. After a moment to collect themselves, they thank you profusely and send one of their crew to compare their maps with yours. Kennedy Yard is marked on their map, where the governor's men lock up visitants and dissidents. You dutifully copy it over. A mutually beneficial arrangement. After a moment's chatter, the other crew politely indicate that they wish to continue on their travels. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave. Whoa. Teleportation, huh? Interesting. So, where's Kennedy Yard? Where is that? Hmm, are you not gonna tell me? Or at least make it obvious. Ah. Last thing. Oh, it does work with the arrow keys. Well, don't I feel like a fool. Also, I don't see where Kennedy Yard is. I don't think I found it. Hmm. I'll look for it later, then. 
Unless, of course, one of these other sites is Kennedy Yard. You know what? It's fine. It's something I'll wait. Yeah. No, I'll worry about it later. I was like, wait, was that other spot there before? Yes, it was. Oh, doctors, just, just go. Go, I have no time for you. All right. Help Agnes and Misery Guts fix the drifting bean. Do you have the materials? Yes, I do. Agnes holds up the silk and whistles appreciatively. You know, this stuff can stop bullets. Now it can finally patch the canopy. Well, yes, I suppose. Spider silk. Hmm. Give her the warding iron. Agnes runs her hand over the rune-carved metal. Excellent. Just what we need. <laughs> oh, dear. A test of graft. Attempt to fix the dirigible. Agnes has complete confidence in you. Good. Good. You and Agnes work on the dirigible tirelessly while Misery Guts watches and smokes a sullen cigarette. Unfortunately, the dirigible is so wrecked that only an expert could fix it. The thing that you and Agnes cobbled together looks wretched, all broken spokes and tattered canopy. Like a bat that's been hit by another kind of bat. Agnes kicks the dirigible in frustration. It collapses and catches fire. We need to gather new materials, she says gloomily. We failed. We failed hard. So much so that we need another bolt of Aranac silk and another warding iron to... Ah, oh. Not... not now, okay? A mask wearer has died and the masks have been given a new face. One of Madame Sadie's rivals has been found dead, accusations of excess noise, and poor behavior leveled at the temple to Gravidon. Surprise, surprise. Hmm. Wander these streets. Oh. The Lily in the Marsh. One performance troupe in Brandazo Plaza has attracted quite a crowd. They're performing The Lily in the Marsh, a centuries-old play. But there's a twist. All the famous central roles, the Lily, the Lover, the Spider, and the Knight, are performed by three-foot-tall puppet golems, grading out their lines with mechanical precision. Meanwhile, human performers dance in the background, twice as tall as the tiny golems, imitating abstract forces in evocative costumes. Each actor represents something like the turbulent sea, the bustling crowd, the plague, or the lily's regret. It's an avant-garde interpretation that would never be seen in the theater houses, but out in the streets, the audience cheer and clap, though they melt away when the actors begin to circulate with cap in hand. Now, now. Approach, donate, strike up a conversation. A fascinating take. They deserve reward for breathing new life into it. You strike up a conversation with the man who played the Spectre of Death, though he's remarkably jovial out of character. He takes your money with heartfelt gratitude, and in the course of your conversation, you somehow end up discussing the play's ambiguous final scene. The knight's death is a subversion of the narrative, argues the Spectre. It tramples narrative, spits on it, and shows us reality. In reality, strength and bravery and cleverness don't matter. Only the lucky survive, and because we cannot accept this, we write fantasies where strength and bravery and cleverness are important. The play's genius is that it shows us truth. Hmm. We could get a reflection on mortality, but... Make a counter-argument. The knight's death is a part of the narrative, not a defiance of it. Bold proposal, slight dis... A slight advantage, actually. Sorry. I always read that as disadvantage. I just assume these aren't going to go well. Ah. The knight's death may counter the audience's expectations, you argue, but the narrative itself is not undone. A moment's reflection shows that the death is heavily foreshadowed, and in the grand scheme of the play, as inevitable as the final grain of sand in an hourglass. The specter of death shakes his head with a smile. He disagrees, but has enjoyed the conversation. The puppet golem that played the knight clanks past you both. You're moving the sword from its torso. It sits down and deactivates itself until the next show. Curtains close. Reflection on mortality and a fragment of an epiphany. Neat. Hmm. No, nothing else. I mean, I could do these things, but don't really want to. Because again, not horrifying or deals I need, it is the other thing. Hideous revelations? Hideous revelations. Which I wonder if they're... Hmm. Are they made from horrifying ordeals, perhaps? 
Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to actually hit that, but... Okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah, let's visit the Penitentiary Museum again. Lord Squalid, yeah, we, uh... We read about him before. Hmm. No, we will just leave. West, I guess. Just to double check some things. Not that far west either. Uh, well, we'll go one west just to get it on the map. Not the most efficient route, but... Eh, uh, oh well. Such is life. Hmm. Oh, great, Scorpion. Nope. I'm faster than you now. <laughs> At least this one. Uh, okay, just straight west. Perfection itself. Hmm. Although after this, we really should... Hmm. Before next episode, I think I'm going to look up how to find ourselves some hideous revelations. Just because I do need a few of them now, and well... I would like to continue the story of Persephone. Okay, no, that's fine. You are suitably slow, so I don't have to worry about you. What? Oh. Presumably that was you just being an idiot. That's fine. Got no problems with that. Excellent. Yeah, first of all, gather news, of course. Sir Bruin has organized a tournament. More poems have been pinned to the leafless tree in the courtyard. One of the squires has gone on an absurdly overambitious quest. As they tend to. Oh well. Poet knights' lives are utterly tranquil. They have no right to look so glum all the time. So, what do we need? Oh. Oh, I can do this multiple times, can I? Well. Hmm. Real quick. Enter the castle. Yeah, it's 50 esoterica and 50 grit. Which isn't actually that bad. Um, real quick. Hmm. Let's see if we can persuade her to take him on. Lady Juliet oversees the potent knight's combat training. When presented with Tybalt, she looks him up and down with obvious dismay. She coughs, forgive me, she says, but I don't have time to train every wandering novice who comes to the keep. I have enough trainees here already. I'm a poet and I know empty rhetoric when I hear it. Ah, uh, so it is, so it is. But once again, esoterica and grit. Okay, so really quickly. I'm sorry, you said something about the poet knight's ally? Hmm. Alright, what's our stats at? Esoterica is good, grit is the issue. So hi, we're going to be surprising you a few times. Sorry, it's not you, it's just this is the quickest way to upgrade our grit, so, you know. How much more do I have to do this? I have one more. One more in me. Okay, grit still needs seven more. Annoying, but... Oh, well, we didn't expect to be getting in there today, anyway. So, I'm going to be heading to Ghoul Watch, get rid of our passenger, or I could always... Hmm, I don't want to take him prisoner. I want to acquire a prisoner, not just take one of my passengers prisoner. It would be terribly rude if I were to, you know, do that. Hmm... Well, I think I've already done it once, so, you know. Neither here nor there, I suppose. Anyway, moving north. Nope, 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 There we go. Little bit awkward, but it's fine. Didn't actually count how many rooms I have to go through. Probably should have. But I'll just... Okay. I'll just flash up the map. Two more. And then left past Twin Flower Rust. Nope. 
Nope, not dealing with you. <laughs> Although, perhaps... I mean, they're all healed up. Hmm. Well, worry about that in the future. Right now, we're just not going to worry about that. Okay. It's fine. It's all fine. All is well. <laughs> oh, dear. Scraping up the hull a bit. Unfortunate. Hmm. I wonder if it's just on song changes that it does the little bat effect. If there's some sort of pattern to it that I can get used to. I'd appreciate it if that was the case. Ah, <sighs> deary me. Deary, dear me. Oh, well. It's fine. Everything's fine. We should make a quick trip to Ghoul Watch. And we'll go from there and everything will be just great. Hmm, I should destroy this. Yes. Whoops. Forsaken priests, the gloomy toll of an enormous bell, the waft, the waft, the waft, don't know how to pronounce that, of incense, eh, incense on the breeze, a dirigible perilously bedecked with candles. These must be priests of the gods forsaken, the left behind gods. This particular dirigible is a patched and tattered affair. Perhaps the rumors are true, perhaps priests of the Forsaken really are cursed. Oh, I don't have any terrible secrets, though. Huh. Oh well. A shame. Would love to see where they come from. But it is not to be. And yes, I could have attacked them, but... Eh. Not usually a good idea to tangle with gods if you can avoid it. Well, I just passed by Twinflower Ross like an idiot. Oh well. I'll go back. I know, I know. It extends the trip and doesn't really get us anything, probably. But, if I could get more of a cultural understanding of the mice and I... That might open up uh, more opportunities to us, possibly. No, no, stop. Stop. There we go. Just... Yep. I am the best pilot. Hi! The little mice and I village smells of stale grain and old bruised fruit. Suspicious eyes glimmer from the hollows of fungoid cottages. They don't trust city folk here. Not after the stories they've heard. Can't say I blame them. Eh, Jungbo Cho, can you do anything here? Right, you are still useless. Good. Well. Bye. Did... Is there not an... Oh, right. Oof. I was like, there isn't an option to run away from this place? Hmm, okay. Deary me, forgot there was a button specifically for that. All right. Left to elsewhere, possibly. Well, actually, absolutely. To Ghoul Watch. Hmm, I don't know if I want to kill you or not. No. I don't want to engage in too much combat right now because I'm planning on making this... Hmm, making this a bit of a longer trip. Hello, music I've never heard before. Um. Oh, there we are. Ruined pub. And nothing here for us. Pity. You know what? I'm gonna go and try to kill you. Oh. Twisted salvagers around Ghoul Watch, the house seems especially fond of depositing otherworldly ships and shipwrecks. Salvagers like these recover such a lost vessels, but their decades out in the darkness take a severe toll. Even the most upright of them is malformed, her skin ragged and gnawed, her arms stunted, her head slumped deep between her shoulders. Bye. 
Yeah. Still don't attack innocent people. Well, uh, mostly innocent people. Hmm. Uh, always good to destroy as many trees as you can. What use do we have for a tree, after all? Besides burning it. Hmm. Oh. A tavern from another world, its roof caved in, its floor caked in dust. The bar is tragically empty. The bartender still sits behind the bar, a skeleton with only a few scraps of flesh still clinging between its ribs. Let's search for a drink. There must be something not smashed. Excellent. You find a dust-caked bottle still lying miraculously untouched beneath a table. It's something. Let's scuttle along. What? It would be lovely if that revelation noise happened somewhere not at the edge of the exit to the place. But whatever, it's fine. Ghoul Watch, a fortress citadel bristling with spikes and cannons, heaving with the living and the dead. In Ghoul Watch, the dead not only walk, but run for office. Hmm. Oh. The ghost visits us in the night, you say? Intriguing. Drop off our ghoul passenger first. Your passenger pays what was promised and slips into the crowd. Hmm. And? Bound for Eld Abrathot. Well, we have a lot of business that way. A sinewy man asks for safe passage to Eld Abrathot. He will pay you 100 guineas on arrival. He clings to his bags and refuses all help. Yet he's trusting his life to a stranger. Hmm. Gather our news. Ghoul Watch is a constant buzz of gossip and intrigue. You can't cross the street without tripping over a story. A perfect blue tulip has grown in the gardens of the Sublime amid much speculation. The music cut out. Provoking concern. The Bright Minister faces accusations of unethical dealings with the Ragged Emperor in defiance of trade sanctions. Oh well, the dead and the living, unquiet as one. Hmm... Well, I suppose we must wander the streets. Even in Ghoul Watch, there are gardens and parks secreted in nooks of cold stone. They're lovely little spaces if you can ignore the corpses. Bodies hang from every tree. Traitors who refuse to come back from the dead. A gang of human children are poking one of the dead with a stick and laughing derisively. Even start rifling through the dead man's pockets. Oh, can't resist that. A test of guile. Throw your voice. Impersonate the dead man. You make the dead man seem to holler in outrage, and the children shriek and scatter, with the exception of one little girl whose huge smile dies quickly on her face. That didn't sound like your voice, she says to the corpse. She spots you nearby and suddenly flies at you, pummeling you with tiny fists. What right did you have? You made me think he came back. She stops fighting you and buries her head in her small hands. Oh. I mean, why was she treating the deceased with such disrespect, then? Because he could have come back, couldn't he? For me? And he would have gone rotty eventually, but we wouldn't mind. She glowers at the body. But he'd rather swing there instead. Oh. Well, that was depressing and sad. Okay, thank you. A ghost visits us in the night. He whimpers and beckons and wants you to follow. The ghost leads you to a tower in one of Ghoul Watch's quieter districts. In the main hall, an ancient banquet has been laid out and forgotten. Cobwebbed skeletons sit at the chairs, skulls slumped in plates of rot blackened gristle. At the head of the table sits the silent minister herself, on a throne of ossified ectoplasm. It's a hideously strange chair, a lump of twisting dark wax, a screaming face visible in every knot and whirl. The ghost bows, then rises to the ceiling to join a swarm of its whispering fellows. The minister turns her face to you, her eyes are empty sockets, her fingernails hooked and yellow, her mouth a badly stitched wound. She gestures for you to speak. Oh? Interesting, we're finding more factions in this lovely place. Oh, I need to do this now. Sell your glimpse of another world, you receive 900, well, 90 guineas and one fetch mirror. 
which is useful. A test of guts. Eat from the rotten feast. Uh, success is impossible, so we're not going to do that. Ghost brings you the minister's tribute. She gestures you to eat of her maggot-ridden banquet, should you desire. Thanks. No. Good. Uh, I'm good. Sell your unsettling conjecture. Her empty eyes bore into you. Gets me an embalmed corpse for my museum, presumably. Again, no. But I have more things to do. Sell your knowledge of dread machinations. Fingernails scrabble excitedly against the arms of her fossil throne. 200 guineas, one reputation here, and some ghost dice, which I don't know what they do, so... That's what we're doing. Leave. It's difficult to turn your back on her. Hmm. Those eyeless eyes, those scimitar nails. When they hear where you're going, your crew shiver in fear. <laughs> Can't say I blame them. Let's see what these guys are selling. What are you selling? What are you buying? Oh. Oh. But you're so expensive. Oh. Oh well, ghoul watch ironworks. The air shimmers with heat. Ghouls stir great vats of toxic chemicals. They have no need for gloves or masks. Ah. Gallows candle. In ghoul watch, dead humans who fail to become ghouls are hanged as traitors. The gibbet harvesters consequently enjoy a roaring trade. And we could sell our embalmed corpse. We'll see about that. Ah, lumber. Ah, old bombastic howitzer cannon. Ooh. When the house steals a ship from some bitter otherworld sea, it almost always appears near Ghoul Watch. The famed flying ships are born of practicality, not whimsy. Ah. Treats and torments no ghoul can resist. A memory of what it was like to live, tastes, smells, loves, blood in the veins. A box of happy memories. There you are, people. Although I wonder, does that actually remove my... Hold up. Oh, that removes the entire box from my inventory? Is that what I'm to understand? Do I not... I can't... Oh... That's not okay. Like, I can't harvest more memories now? Is that what I'm understanding? Because I don't see the item I used to do that. Well. Well. Oh, well. Was it enough? It is. So, warding armor. Warding iron is a useful buffer against the ravages of madness, darkness, and the occult. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, just real quick. Upgraded to warding armor. Thank you. Do I have to sell the other part? I assume I don't. It's a perhaps silly assumption, but... Well, we know another place to go for a... Interesting upgrade. I want me that cannon next. And, well, we won't have a next episode, but next episode we will be going elsewhere. First to see if we can finally impress Bradley. And next, well, I think we pursue Old Otto's quest. Seems like a nice thing to do. And I am, of course, a nice person. Am I not? <laughs> Still, for now, thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I shall see you all soon.